right, welcome everyone. This is Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. This is an extreme beginner's video. I want everybody to realize that um, when you're just starting out in watercolor, uh, it's not easy, it's difficult. You're going to have your tough days where you think you can't do it. Don't let that get you down. Don't let it bother you. Watercolor is just a matter of the long-term approach. The um, you know, uh, slow and steady wins the watercolor race, and that's really what it's about. Slow and steady. You're just going at it 15, 10, 15 minutes a day of practicing your drawing. And then maybe on the weekends, if you have more time, you do a little bit of painting, and you just keep that same process and flow going. Slow and steady, week after week, and month after month, and year after year, you're going to get better and better and better. It will not happen overnight, so if anyone tells you you should be doing gray paintings after two months or six months it's not going to happen watercolor is not an easy medium but you can learn and learn quickly and that's why i'm here i'm here to show you that you can learn excellent techniques and methods that'll help you to get better at your watercolor drawings and paintings effectively and quickly so that you're not uh, getting bogged down with um, problems in the beginning i want you to have success right out of the gates so that's why i'm here so this painting here is going to be proof of that. You're basically going to go into this painting and just concentrate on the lower left-hand corner of your painting. We talk about this. This is the finished painting. We're going to get into all the details, but basically what we did was we just took this painting and we said we're going to make a design of the lower left-hand corner of your painting is where your action is, right here. So your action and your excitement and your focal point is right here. The bungalows along the ocean, the beach, the figures, some trees over here on the left-hand side, and some beach. That's your focal point. Once you have this, paint. we would draw this in. We draw in the figures. We draw in the bungalows. You'll see how to do it. We do it quickly, effectively. Then we go in and we do the other section of the painting here quickly, effectively, beautiful brush strokes with lots of water, lots of paint, and we let this other two-thirds of the painting again. So your focusing and your concentration is mostly on this section in the beginning, and then once you're done with this, then you're having more fun, and you're getting this, this, and this section of your painting done more loosely, more effectively, and with more fun. There's not much that you have to really do in these one, two, and three sections over here. This is the focal point. So once you get this done in the beginning of the painting, the rest goes quickly and it's a lot of fun. You'll see how you do this on this video. So join along with us. We're having fun with this painting and with this process of figuring out the focal point first gets the attention. And then after that, you're going in and just really getting in the rest of your painting rapidly with uh, a successful brush strokes and water and paint and you have the painting done in no time and, and you'll have a lot of success with this method and this technique. So stick with us here. We're going to go go into this step by step slowly. As the video goes on, you'll see you're going to have fun and you're going to create this beautiful painting in no time. OK, so we'll be right back and we'll start the drawing. All right, it's Extreme Beginner Series here. We're always uh, trying to um, simplify and make things easy when we're starting out in watercolor. We don't want to overcomplicate things, make things too difficult. That usually results in um, frustration and then uh, wanting to give up uh, on the watercolor medium. The watercolor medium is so incredibly exciting, fun. You can take it anywhere you go with you. You can take it on vacation weekend trips, you can paint around the house, you can go in the backyard, you can go to parks, you can watercolor, you can take anywhere with you. It's clean. Basically, it's not messy. It's just a beautiful medium and you can create incredible uh, paintings with watercolors. But many artists do kind of get frustrated with it because it's not that easy to always uh, get the result you want. So let's get the results here we want by just going step by step um, in this video. So you can kind of just see you can really do a, um, a very simple rendition of any type of scene you want, a seascape, a landscape, a cityscape, uh, a flower painting, boat scene, whatever it is. 
you know, you can you can render something very simply. The, the main thing is just getting down a simple sketch and then getting in there and doing your watercolors. We have our palette here uh, all set up. Um, I always just like to mention my materials here first off. You know, I have a regular office pencil. This is a Prang Oval 16 watercolor set. You can get this anywhere online. You can get this in the big box stores like um, Blix uh, uh, Art Store. You can get this at like Michael's. All the large, uh, I think there's another um, Michael's, Blix. There's, um, you know, your large box stores like hobby and craft stores, local artist stores. They usually have this set. Uh, the Prang Oval 16. This is a very popular, but you can definitely get it online on Amazon or uh, usually sites like that, but Amazon definitely has this one. And it's affordable. You don't have to spend a fortune. It comes with its own brush. So it comes with this brush right here. You can kind of see the brush here. It comes with a beautiful pointy round brush, synthetic brush, which is excellent. You can do a lot with this. And then I always say, you know, you can <clears throat> upgrade your brushes to buying a, a simple set of Princeton a brush a brush set by Princeton. I think it has five or six brushes, a couple flat brushes like this, a couple round brushes like this, <clears throat> and then you have a, like a really nice set of brushes and some simple start, you know, start, you know, starting out, you just need this type of semi-moist Prang Oval 16 watercolor set and you're you're all good. So let's kind of see how we can do a real simple painting. I also added in a, a round brush here. This one is a, a Princeton um, number six, simply, uh, actually it's a Simply Simmons, I'm sorry. Uh, a Simply Simmons round brush number six. It's a little larger than the stock brush that comes with the Prang set. So, you know, you give yourself a, a small round brush, watercolor brush, and then a, a medium sized round watercolor brush. And then if you have a, a square brush, a flat brush, you're, you're also, you kind of have a real good trifecta of um, brushes to, to start with, and that's all you really need. And then you have your, your semi-moist pa paints here. And then um, I have just, you know, student grade paper here. And then we have a, just a, a Holbein spritzer bottle. This is really helpful to have because you can just spritz your paints. Right before you start painting, you just spritz your paints a little bit with some clean, fresh water in a Holbein small spritzer bottle. That moistens up the paint so you're, you'll be ready to paint uh, when you're done sketching. And that's really all you have. That simple um, arsenal of paintbrushes and palette with paints. And then we have an um, office pencil you can use, simple office pencil. To draw with you don't need anything fancy I use a little bit of a softer lead pencil so you can see my drawings on the video here that's the only thing I do different with my um, my art supplies here is I use a softer lead pencil so you can see the the darker lead drawing because I have bright lights here with my camera and if I used a normal number 2B uh, HB lead pencil it might not show up as well so that's why I use this uh, B, which is a soft lead pencil, and that's really it. And then when I use my, I use a watercolor pad. This is a um, student grade um, Strathmore watercolor pad. And the only thing I do is I take, this is basically drafting tape or artist tape, and I like to do a border around my paper. And I think you should do that too. Absolutely. Does that make sense? If you can do a good border of drafting tape around your paper, it makes all the world of a difference because when you're done painting, when you peel off the tape, it gives it a beautiful clean border and it makes your painting look much better so that when you peel off your tape, once you're done your, with your painting, it's almost like you have a beautiful white, crisp, clean line of border around your painting and it makes it, it looks like a professional painting. And even though you're maybe just starting out and it doesn't seem like a lot, um, can you see that it would be a benefit if you have a good, clean, crisp border around your painting? It'll make it look so much better. You'll have more confidence. You'll feel better about your paintings versus if you're just sloshing on paints and you're not putting a border around your paper, you know, it's not going to look as good. So once you're done with your painting, you peel off your tape and you have a border, a good, clean, crisp, nice white border around your painting that'll make 
the painting looks so much better and you'll feel more confident about your painting. So I want you to have that. Okay, now, so we're, we've got our setup here. We covered just quickly our paints, our brushes, our pencils. And that's what we want to do. And now we're just going to cover our drawing. What we're going to do, where is the, how are we going to do our drawing? Well, we, I usually go around my tape with some pencil line, just so we can kind of see the border there. So now you can see the border of the, the drawing. We have a good rectangle here for our border. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a simple, um, let's see, let's do a beautiful uh, uh, shore scene along the beach with some, uh, maybe some beach houses and a couple sailboats and some water. So I can already kind of feel the scene, what it's going to look like. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take my um, pencil and I'll say, all right, where is the light coming from in this scene? And I just want to Maybe the light's going to come from this side over here and go across the scene this way. So I'll take my light insignia over here, like that. So I always like to make my light insignia, and I pretend it's a light fixture. Does that make sense? So I have a little light fixture up here. I pretend this is my little lamp. I have a lamp up here, and it's a light, and a bulb in the lamp like that, and there's some light like this coming out, some lines, and that's our light insignia. So let's do that, please. Please always do this when you're doing your drawings and paintings. Always kind of find out where your light source is coming from, no matter what you're working from. If you're working from photographs, other art books of other artists, watercolor artists, whether you're working from pictures on the internet, or whether you're working outdoors, maybe in your backyard or in a park, wherever you're painting, whatever you're doing, try to always, the first thing you want to do once you get your paper all set up and you have some tape on there for a border, figure out where is the light coming from. And then I, we're going to say in this scene, it's coming from the left side this way. For a beginner, that's important. You want to kind of know where your light's going to be and where your shadows are going to be. And if you have that down, you're, wow, you're really 100%, really 100% ahead of the game because the uh, shadowing and light is really important in your picture. If it's a cloudy day, well, maybe not so much. So maybe if it's a cloudy day, you don't have to worry about the light so much. But in any case, if you want bright, sunny light in your painting, then you're going to want to have your light insignia on your somewhere on your paper. If you, the light was coming from this direction, we'd put, it, we'd put it up here, our light insignia. But we're over here, so we're going to go left. Pa light's coming from this way across this way. Okay, so we have that set. And then we're going to say, all right, Let's figure out where the ocean and the shores, uh, the beach is going to be. The ocean and the beach in this scene. It's going to be about uh, a third of the way up from the bottom. So we say, okay, here's the, here's our vertical, vertical line of area we have to work in. And if we split that into three sections, we can roughly say one third here, one third here, and that gives us one third two-thirds, three-thirds. So we're breaking our space divisions up right now into thirds. Two-thirds here, sky. One-third ocean and beach. And then we just take our ocean and beach line and go right across. There we go. So there we have it. We're going to have a large sky and the ocean and the beach right here along this line here, the, the first third. So you could say this is one third here, two thirds, and three thirds. So two thirds and three thirds up here, that's sky. First third is beach and ocean. Okay, that's all. Very simple. Does that make sense? Okay, so now that we have that line, we put across our line here, and we say, all right, let's see. The ocean's here. Let's start making the beach go across here like this. So here's the beach, the sand, here's the ocean water. We have that. Perfect. Now we're going to say, all right, let's have a little bit of shrubs and bushes over here on the left. Let's make a couple bushes and shrubs and weeds and things like that over here on the left just a little bit, and then we're going to have, we'll do a couple shacks. Why not? 
here's a shack here. And then a little bit down in the distance over here, there's another shack. And another one over here. And you can kind of see the shacks are getting smaller as they go. And these are little small cottages along the ocean. And what else do we have? Well, we have another small rooftop over here and another back portion of this here. And we have a little chimney there on top. Another chimney over here. And what else do we have? Well, we're going to have some figures. Let's have some figures here. So let's do some figures here. And always remember, for figures, when you're doing figures in a seascape or a landscape or a cityscape, try to think of them as carrots. I had a great artist one time show me that. He said, just try to do your figures like carrots. Think of a carrot. Like that. Right? A carrot. So if you can envision a carrot like that, that's your figures. And then if you put a figure like this with a head, you know, and a... And a That's pretty good. That looks good. So a carrot is pretty much looks just like a figure and when you're doing uh, figures in your your paintings. Again, a carrot, you just do the carrot shape like that. Put a head on top like so. Shoulders and then as we go down the body gets thinner and more to a point like that. Legs and you can see how that really does work. Wonders for your figures. Can you see that? How that looks just like a carrot? You know, you put a little small, you do a carrot with a small head on there, shoulders, and then you, you know, you go down, slim down, that's your legs, and you have it. And then you could do some arms however you want the arms to go, but this looks fine. So remember, just think of a carrot, and then we can always... Uh, let me see if I can find something here. Let me see. Give me a second. Okay, I can't find right now. Oh, yes, I can do something quickly. There we go. Think of a carrot when you're doing your figures. Just like that. Okay, think of a carrot, and then you have your figures. You, that's all you need to do your figures in your watercolor paintings. And this, of course, is Extreme Beginners paint, you know, painting series, so that's really helpful for beginners, but it works for, if you're a pro professional watercolor artist, you can still use that theory of a carrot because it really does work. That's all you need to do your figures, and that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to do a couple carrots and some shadowing. And for my figures here in the distance, and then there's a couple um, closer uh, figures here. You know, some, there we go, it's a carrot. Like that. And uh, what else? Oh, we have another one over here. So we have some carrots walking around in our painting shadows here. Sunlight is coming this way. Shadows go to the right, like that. So here you have one, two, and three, and four figures. Maybe a small figure here. You make that a small carrot. And that's it. So you have one, two, three, four, five figures. Beautiful. Carrots, think of that, carrots. Draw a carrot first and then just add a head to it and you're all set. And then you have your ocean here, your beach line here, kind of on an angle, and you're all set. This is the scene. Well, let's get into it. Next thing we're going to do is the painting portion, but let's take a quick break first because um, once you draw your, uh, your pencil sketch on your watercolor paper, that's an, that you've already spent a lot of time and concentration doing this. 
you don't want to start blowing it when you go in and do your water color paint right now trying to you're burning out you're getting tired you're doing your drawing that takes effort it takes concentration better off you throw your pencil down you say you know what I'm taking a break 10-15 minutes then I'll come back and do my painting portion and that's the best way you're gonna do it unless you have great concentration I find most people need the break does that make sense please take a break please 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 take a break before you go in and do your painting do your drawing first take a break then come back after 10-15 minutes or even the next day if you want to break it down into days do your drawing one day and then do your painting the next day you'll, you'll find you'll really benefit from that so and I always mention too if you like this video please subscribe right down there on the right hand side of the screen if you subscribe you'll be happy we're going to be working together you just jump in here and work along with us we're doing fun painting here we're doing a beautiful uh, a beach scene here with uh, sea, the seascape some bungalows along the water some figures we're going to do a beautiful big sky watery sky you're going to have a great time painting this we've done the sketch you see how we did the sketch let's not uh, again get bogged down with being uh, our concentration needs to be tip top when you come back and do the painting so take a break 10 15 minutes at minimum and then we'll come back and start painting okay so we'll be right back everything's prepped and ready to go we got our paints ready and um, brushes are ready over here on the side and um, we'll get started in just a second okay so we're ready to get back started again here and uh, we said that we wanted to take a break first uh, before we started our painting because we did a lot of concentrating uh, con we did a lot of uh, concentration on our pencil drawing as you can see here we did some figures and we did the buildings and we did the layout of our thirds here on our overall painting surface which is our rectangle we always talk about the rectangle everything is happening within this rectangle so we basically put our main subject matter in the lower left hand corner of this painting so if you can imagine if we just did a crosshairs on this painting and we said okay let's break this painting into uh, a um, crosshair here and we went like this and then we went like this we have our main subject matter right here in this lower left hand corner and that's a great composition you can always think of this as if you break your composition or your drawing into core you know into four corners or, or four you know four pieces like this quarters one quarter two quarter three quarter four quarters or just basically the crosshair here you can put your painting in any or your main subject matter in any one of these four sections um, it doesn't matter which section it is it could be over here over here over here or over here and then the rest of the areas is more softer and calmer not as much information does that make sense I'm giving tidbits of information here so you'll you'll kind of have this for the future when you're going to maybe work from a photograph or something online or if you're outdoors and you're painting somewhere whatever it is whatever you're painting whatever you're doing you can always remember this always works very successfully if you just take a a rectangle that you're working within and you take it and split it up into quarters and you just put your main subject matter in one of the corner one of these four quarters here we happen to go into the left hand bottom quarter we could have put our main subject matter up here and it would work fine and then we leave the rest of the other areas a little quieter and that always works so i just want to mention that that's a great design principle you'll want to just be familiar with that kind of understand that's one design principle that really really works fantastic for your watercolors as you're working and going forward and creating more paintings and so forth so now we're getting ready to paint we're going to say to ourselves self what are we going to do next well we're going to just paint this um a la prima let's just paint it as we go we're not going to do anything fancy let's just start with the sky you know what let's let's not even do that let's start with the buildings first and then we'll do the sky maybe so i wet my brush and i always say have a tissue handy to dry off your brush a little bit you rinse off your brush you dry it off a little bit with a tissue or you can use a sponge you can leave a little sponge next to your water container to the right and then uh, with your you know you have your water container to the right 
you rinse your brush off, you, you touch it onto the sponge a little bit, and then you go in and get your watercolor paints and you mix it on over here. So let's do that. I rinse my brush, I take a little bit of water off on the sponge, I come over here, and I say, what colors are we going to make our shacks here? And I would say, let's go with a brownish color. Maybe some blue, brown and blue. Brown and blue. Maybe a little bit of orange in there mixed. A little bit of red. Like that. That's all. You can make your own colors. You don't have to stick with anything. It's like a brownish color. Like that. And you can see, that's what I just did a rectangle basically. So essentially I just painted a rectangle like this. Right there. Then um, I'm going to maybe do something a little different. Let's go with some purple and some blue. Mix some purples and blues here. Let's just do a little different color over here. Let's do a bluish color over here. Like that. And that's all I did was another rectangular shape here. And uh, what else do we have? Let's do a lemon yellow color. Let's do this one over here, lemon yellow. So already you can see we're just having fun. We're putting some different colors in our painting. We don't want to have just one color the whole way. Does that make sense? So as a watercolor artist, you know, you want to make sure you're mixing your colors around. We don't want to, um, we do not want to um, paint in a boring way where we just start painting everything one color. Um, so what you wouldn't want to do in this painting is just start doing all like something like this, like doing everything the same color, like that. We want to add variety. And then even more variety. You can kind of see I'm adding more variety to this by adding some mixtures of colors, but blue, brown, yellow. There we go. This would not be the good way to go, doing everything one color. That, that would be boring. So we just remember that. Mix around our colors. Make things more exciting. Does that make sense? Can you see how that looks more exciting? And then what about, well, let's, what, let's do the roofs here. Let's do some orange roofs. So we're going to do some orange clay, maybe some orange and some reds. Let's do that. Let's do some orange and red roofs, like so. And uh, maybe... Maybe the next one is going to be a little... A little bit more grayer looking with a little bit of brown mixed into the orange and red and then over here we can go with the same kind of thing like that and then as we go further into the distance over here let's just keep that light and maybe some orange and some blue over here keep it kind of a gray looking color and then maybe uh, we'll leave that go we won't paint in maybe we'll leave this white this shack over here. We'll leave that white for now since we have some paint up here. We don't want it to all blend together. So, And then maybe even some more over here. Another rooftop over here from that shack there. Already we can see, wow, look at this. We have a beautiful um, uh, area of colors. We did our shacks, our bungalows along the ocean here. Now let's uh, maybe let's do some work on our figures. Maybe let's do a light blue shirt there. And then maybe some... Oh, that black is very powerful. Always remember when you're using your black. Does this make sense? You probably already figured this out a long time ago since we've been working on YouTube here with Extreme Beginners. You know when you use that black color, wow, is that powerful. That'll really take over your whole painting, so you got to be really careful whenever you use this black. This black is super strong, super powerful. It can just totally take over a, um, a painting. So be careful when you use your black. Use it very sparingly. So let's do that. Let's make some black jeans here or some black pants. 
like that. Okay. A bit of a shadow, shadow there. Uh, what else are we going to do? Let's uh, let's leave this shirt white up here. Maybe we'll go with a little bluer purple, maybe purple and blue. Maybe we'll make some purple and blue pants here. That looks good. And then uh, what else are we can have? Maybe some orange and red for some flesh tones here. There's maybe someone's wearing some shorts there or some pants. Maybe it's a cooler day. Everyone's wearing some pants here. And then we're going to do some more. Here in the distance, these figures, you don't have to get too fussy with them. These figures here are very small, so you don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to do some We're doing some uh, hair on our heads of our figures here. So we'll just do some black hair, some brown hair, some blonde hair. Whatever you want to make it is fine. Maybe we'll do some yellow shirt here. Maybe we're going to leave this shirt here white. So already you can see the carrot shapes of our figures. We're just doing carrots, basically carrots like we talked about before for our figures. Keep it simple and you'll be very happy with your results. Again, we said when you make your figures, just make them like carrots with a head on there. So you just make a carrot and then a head on there. A small head there. Make your head very small, very small. You can always make it a little larger if you have to. But make your heads really small there. Carrot bigger, shoulders much bigger, right? Like that. And there you go, you have it. And uh, lights coming from the left, so I think I should leave this. I'll lift up a little bit of paint. So the darker colors are over on the left. Dry off my brush. Do a little shadowing over here on this figure. There we go. If you have to lift up a little bit, fine. And that's it. You're really all, you're in perfect shape here. You got your buildings in here, your bungalows. Maybe we're going to put a little bit of blue on that one. And now we're going to start going in. Let's do our, our greens. Mixed in with a little bit of browns. Mix some greens and some oranges with some, so even orange, orange and green really works well. Gives you a good and there we go. We're going to do some bushes and trees over here. Look at how good that looks. And then what else do we have? Maybe some yellow mixed in there. A couple splashes. A couple splashes to give it some excitement. Some finger painting. Look at, do some finger painting here and there. That always looks good. Some finger painting. Like that. Perfect. Then we go in, dry off the brush, go in and get some blue and some brown and do some shadow colors. Blue, brown, blue, do a little bit of shadowing in there. See that? A little bit of shadowing. And then a little more splashing. And if you don't feel comfortable splashing, don't do it. Just, you know, forget about it. Do some finger painting instead. Add some variation to your greens over here. Looks much better if you add variation to your There we go. We're all set. Maybe some 
distant greens over here. They're more bluish colors. Perfect. All right, now we've done quite a bit. We have our bungalows here along the ocean. We have some trees and bushes over here on the left. We did some finger painting. We did some splashing technique. You can skip both of those if you want and you just want to do some brush work. That's fine. You do what you think is going to be more comfortable for you. Um, we did some shadowing. And now let's take a break. Once we take a break, we can uh, come back and we'll have a more comfortable feeling about doing the rest of the painting. I'm, I'm thinking let's do the ocean next and some of the beach colors. So let's do the ocean and beach colors next when we come back. And then we'll be well on the way to finishing up the painting. So never get weary of your painting. And... Uh, we're going to have fun. We're going to maybe do some shadowing, too. We'll add some final touches to the painting, of course, but for the most part, you can kind of see we are um, really comfortable with the idea that we have our, again, if we're doing our crosshairs, we're just kind of trying to get the idea. If we can get this, this section of our painting completed right over in here with the details, the figures, the shacks, that's all you need is one quarter of your painting with interesting information that you can focus in on as a viewer. If your viewer is looking in in your painting and saying, oh, what a wonderful painting. Here's the main focus point right here in this lower corner. And then over here, it's more calm and there's stuff going on, but not as much interesting information as here. And then if you take that idea and you just say, okay, now we're done with this main focal point. The rest is sort of simple. You don't have to focus too much on stressing on the rest of this painting because you can just do the rest of it more loosely fun you know have some fun with this you're an extreme beginner you need to learn that you just focus on one section that's the details and then the rest of the paintings more calm relaxed and you can just uh, go in there and do a good job and i'm hopefully i'm giving you the whole enchilada of information here that's going to help you be a better artist so we're going to continue on. Let me take a quick break and I'll, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Hey, it's Chris Petrie here again. We're getting started. We're going to start doing our sky washes and our uh, sand on our beach and our ocean water. But we, we said as we finished up just in the last segment and we're, we took a break, I took a break. I hope you didn't mind. I took a break. Uh, we're going to just kind of focus in on we did one quarter of the painting with a lot of detail. And then since you have a lot of detail in this one quarter section of your painting, you're all fine. The rest is, you know, just uh, you're gonna have fun with the rest of the painting and you're not gonna be sweating on it too much. So let's take our, so now we're gonna switch over to a flat brush. This is a Princeton um, uh, art brush, Princeton Art Brush and Company. I got this really for a great deal, a great bargain. I got this brush as well as about three or four other brushes um, which were similar to this size brush like this. Three or four different brushes in one pack for about five dollars and that's all you need. You buy a five pack or a six pack of Princeton art brush with maybe a couple flat brushes like this and a couple round brushes like this and then plus you have a this brush, which is a number six, Simply Simmons, which is a little bit of a larger round brush, and you pretty much have everything all set, and you you haven't spent more than $25, $30 on your art supplies, which is good, because if you're just starting out, you don't want to spend like $100, $200 on art supplies. Keep it simple, buy the simple. This is the best inexpensive art gear I can find that I think is going to work for you, and I think it's going to work beautiful for you, and I know you already are having success with it, so we don't have to talk about that anymore. Let's continue on. We're going to do some sky washes and some beach. Let's do the beach first, and the and the and let's do first the water. So now, since we're going to do water, ocean water, we're using the lower some green, some blue, 
some darker blue over here, maybe some darker blue there, maybe a little bit of purple, a little bit of brown up here in the top. And then we can get our colors of our ocean. So let's start out at the top of the ocean with the darker. And you see how I'm doing this. I'm just putting in a line a little bit at a time. See that? That's not difficult. You just take your flat brush a little bit at a time. And as long as you have your pencil line on there and you can use, you can use a ruler across your painting when you start to get your level line for your ocean. And then now you just take your brush and you just tap along that line. As long as it's close, you're good enough. Then you rinse your brush tap it on the sponge or you tap it on your tissue or you tap it on your paper towels whatever you got and then you go in here and you get the other greens we mixed up which were the uh, lighter greens and blues and then you kind of just work it on down leave some lights there you want to leave some white paper there you don't want to do everything paint the whole thing in so then you just do that then you maybe take some rinse your brush Dry off a little bit of water off your brush and then maybe wet the paper a little bit. And then just flow some down with nothing, just water. Take water and put it onto your paper and let it flow on down like so. So I hope that you will do this. Look at that. And I think that looks good. Once you have that done, you've got your ocean in and you're all set. Then you rinse off your brush and then you say, all right, what are we going to use for the sand color? That would be yellow, brown, yellow, brown. And that should be good. And then you just look at this how I'm doing this oh you don't want to do that so if you do this wet the paper quick wet the paper blot it up a little bit and there you go it's all fixed see that simple as that if you make a mistake on your watercolor don't stress out just blot it up with some tissues there you go now, you can see we have our, and I'm just, taking some of this splash on there, sand, you, you're thinking sand splashing speckles, if you need to you can do some, you can use your other brush, hold your brush here and then you take this brush and just and there you have it. You have that feeling of sand. You want that. You want that in your painting. Some texture. Texture is king. There you go. Maybe a little bit of yellow for warmth. So I'm taking some yellow paint and just putting it on there. A little bit here and there. Maybe even some in the water. Just a touch in the water. Like that. But there we go. I kind of, if you noticed, I I went over with brush strokes and kind of covered over our spatters and our splashes and our speckles. That's where you let this dry. So we'll come back again later once this dries 100% over here on our beach sand. Then we'll come back over and do some more speckles of sand once it dries. Because if we put speckles right now when the paper's wet, it's not going to show up. It's going to just dilute. It's going to become just, it'll dilute and it'll just, it won't look good basically. So let's come back to that later. Well, let's get our sky wash in. So basically we got our water in, our sand on our beach. Now let's get our sky wash in. So now I'm going to take some fresh clean water 
and just put it up here in the sky. Fresh, clean water, not everywhere, here and there, just anywhere random. Just so you have some fresh, clean water to wet the paper a little bit on the sky area. And then leave it drier at the bottom. Don't go uh, down too far toward the ocean area with your wet paper. So leave your leave your wash, your fresh clean water that you, you're splashing on your paper on the top of your sky. You don't want to have too much down here close to the water. So now we're doing that. We're wetting the paper with clean fresh water. If your water is murky, you have to empty your water, like I'm going to do now, and pour fresh clean water in. So I have a water bucket. I always keep fresh clean water. Empty out your water often so you don't have muddy water, because especially when you're doing this and you're splashing on some water here, just get it on there like so, like that. Just get it in there. Good. Now we get some of that sky color. The bluish green sky color. More blue. And then here we'll have a little bit of brown just to have some a little bit of that muddy looking color. So you have some kind of gray color there with some brown and blue. And then you have mostly your blue wash here. And then you just go in, just start putting it on. Just have fun with this, look. Just throw it on there, don't have any fuss about it. Look at that, just, that's the way the sky is. Bam! Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. You can't do anything better than that. If you're doing that, you're, you're all set. Don't fuss around with it and sit there and go, one, two, three, boom, 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 boom. Just flow it in there. Throw it on with your brush, have a great time, walk away from it and you'll be happy and it'll look great. Then we get our grayish color. We mix in a little bit of our grayish color up here. You see that? A little bit of variation in our sky. We don't want the sky looking the same everywhere. Throw some grayish washes in there. And then now as you get closer to the bottom of the sky, you're gonna put some orange in there. Get that orange, orange mix in there, that orange wash in there. And I think you are going to have a wonderful painting. Look at that. The sky looks great. Again, have fun with this. Just throw on some paint. Throw in a little bit more of a, some darks in there. Put some brown, some in blue. And no one's going to wonder how you did it. They're going to think you, you just you did an incredible job. Look. And that's it. You are complete. Let this dry 100%, peel off the tape, and you're all good. Again, more simple is better. Quicker brush strokes. Get them in there. Fire it in. Just fire it in. You're the creator. You're just firing it in, having a great time with this. You're not fussing too much. The quicker you can do it, the better off it's going to be. I guarantee it. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll let this dry. We'll see if we need to do anything else to maybe do a few details to just touch this up a little bit. But I think you're going to see that this is just looking fine. I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit with some, some finger painting here. And uh, you're going to have a good time with this. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, I hope you're enjoying these videos. We're doing some wonderful work here. We do everything watercolor, so I always mention um, that from the beginning of my videos, I always mention that we do every type of watercolor type paintings. We do seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, flower painting, boats, uh, beach scenes like this. 
Um, we do figure painting. So you're getting everything here, the whole enchilada of information on watercolors with my channel here, Chris Petrie. Uh, watercolors and um, so just keep coming back have fun with it if you don't like a specific uh, subject matter we're covering on a particular week you just watch the painting even if you don't like the painting so much and you don't think you're gonna paint it even if you just watch it you're gonna learn all about the colors the techniques the ways the methods we're using to um, create our paintings here and the things that you need to learn so even just watching videos you're gonna learn a lot and then if you come to the next week's video and you say, oh, flowers, I love flowers, then you're painting that one. So you're watching that video, then you know you're going to maybe watch it a second time and paint along with it. So all I'm saying is if you're watching on a consistent basis week by week, you're going to benefit tremendously. So that's why I always encourage everybody on the right hand side of the uh, bottom of the screen here on YouTube, you just click the subscribe button, you subscribe to my channel. You'll have all the videos that will be coming into your uh, YouTube channel that you have uh, every week, and you'll be alerted if you click the notification bells, which is that little bell icon next to subscribe uh, on the right-hand side below. If you click the uh, all notifications, this way, you'll, as soon as my video comes out, you'll be alerted. You can watch it, learn some new information, go over some more information you've gone over before, but you're just learning it a second or third or fourth time, which is going to just solidify it and help you to retain it and remember it so that when you're in there painting and you're doing your own drawings and paintings at home, you, you're going to remember the things we're covering because you've seen it over and over and over because repetition is the mother of skill. So if you want to have the skills, you have to do the re repetition. So that's why I always say subscribe and just keep watching the videos over and over. You'll get familiar with all of the things we're doing here with the colors, the paints, the drawings, all of the techniques that we use, the methods, the designs of things, the layout of how we do our paintings, the light, the shadow, all of that. You'll learn it. It'll just be second nature after a while, like driving a car or riding a bicycle. You'll just, you'll be, your paintings are going to look much better if you're just going uh, along, following each week with us here and learning all the details you need to learn about watercolor. So let's finish up this painting. That's very simple to do. We have two brushes here. And like we said early, just a few minutes ago, we're going to get some brown and some blue and some orange, brown, blue, orange. Like that. With our flat brush. And then we're just going to do our sand speckles. And then if you see that the speckles are going everywhere and it's too much, that's when you would just take some uh, tissue, dry off your brush a little bit. If you're having too many speckles going everywhere, of course you would take a tissue. If you see too many speckles going everywhere, blot up a few that go off, off course. That's all. A little bit of speckles in the sky is not going to hurt. That's actually going to look good because if you have them down in the bottom of your painting, it won't hurt to have them up top. It'll look like the painting has uh, a symmetry to it, a cohesiveness. So there we go. We're just doing some spattering for the sand, that feeling of sand. Perfect. Now, what else can we do? We have pretty much everything. Maybe a little shadowing might not be a bad idea. Let's take our round brush that comes with our prang set. Let's get some of that blue that we already mixed up. Maybe add a little purple. And let's see if we could add a little bit of shadow under there, like that. That looks good. The sunlight is coming from, again, we set up here. It's coming this way. So there is a little bit of shadow on our roofs here. So then we get those in. Then we dry off our brush a little bit and then we blend it in a little bit more too. And there we have the shadows under the eaves of the roof, but there we, we kind of soften that line a little bit. Can you see how I did that? So there is a shadow under there, but it's a little bit subtler. It's not like a straight line. And then we can also go in and get some black. 
Remember, use black very sparingly because it really does go a long way. Dry off a little bit of that black on a tissue, and we'll make a couple doorways here. There's a couple doors on these bungalows, a couple windows, so we'll just do that. A couple windows and doors, like so, like that, and there's another door there, another door here, over there, like that. We make some happy doors and windows. that another window there so we have some doors and windows we just want to put those in and then if you want to put in some seagulls let's do that um, we just want to again with with uh, I, I find with seagulls or birds essentially all we want to do is when you do seagulls and birds is you want to make some large closer so if we have some birds closer to us, we make them larger. And then as they go far in the distance, we want to make them smaller. So you just want to have some smaller birds like that and some larger ones closer by. And then birds usually fly in all different patterns. So you'd want to create different patterns all the time. So all you have to remember is to mix it all up when you're doing your birds. So again, if you have birds like this, one like that, maybe one like this, one like that, one this way, maybe one upside down, and you make them big and small. The thing is variety, lots of variety with your birds. You don't want to do one bird like this and another bird like this and another bird like, like all the same. Sometimes you'll see this when people do birds in the sky. They all look the same and they all look like they're... Birds always fly in different... One goes this way, one goes that way. One's wings are up this way. One's wings are like that. One like this. So they're all different all the time. So let's keep that in mind. Let me pencil in a couple birds here. So let's do this. Let's do a larger bird here. And then one here, one there, one there, one there. And I'm just making them smaller as I go. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I penciled them in first, my birds, my seagulls. Now we're going to go in with our pointy round brush that came with our prang set. We're going to do brown, blue, and a little bit of black. So I get a little bit of brown, blue, and black, just mix up some muddy looking color, dry off a little bit of the brush on some paper towel or tissue because you don't want too much water. You just want a little bit of paint on your brush. And let's try that out and see how that works. One, two, there we go, that's the first one. Second one, a V shape like that. Oh, look good. This one here, one, two, okay, over there that way. This one here, that way. That one there, smaller and tiny. Okay, I hope you like that. Some birds here, all different. They're just flying every which way. And we are set. Look at how beautiful that looks. Now, all we have to do is peel off the tape and just see how it looks. Again, I always say, tape off your borders of your painting because it, it looks so much better when you're done and you lift off the tape. You can see how much it looks. It looks better. It looks more professional. It looks like you have a mat around it. Like it's ready to go to the gallery or you're sending it to somebody for a gift, or you're putting it for sale on the internet, whatever. And you can see how that looks really well done. Not too much fussiness about it. We really went powerful strokes in the skies. We took just 10, 15 minutes, and we did the whole sky wash in just five minutes. And we took five, 10 minutes to do the water and the 
15 minutes for this ocean and the beach. And our most of our time was spent doing this a little more carefully with the figures and the roofs and these bungalows along the ocean. I hope you had a wonderful time doing this painting. This is an extreme beginner's painting. You can do this. This is just a matter of going through the steps as we show here on this video. And um, we'll see you on the next video. And again, happy painting, everybody. Thanks for coming by. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.